Welcome to the Indie Film Hustle Podcast, episode number 91. The reason we struggle with insecurity is because we compare our behind the scenes with everyone else's highlight reel. Steve Furtick. Broadcasting from the back alley in Hollywood, it's the Indie Film Hustle Podcast, where we show you how to survive and thrive as an indie filmmaker in the jungles of the film biz. And here's your host, Alex Ferrari. Welcome, my indie film hustlers, to another episode of the Indie Film Hustle Podcast. I am your humble host, Alex Ferrari. So I wanted to give you an announcement, guys. I am going to be speaking at the Holly Shorts Film Festival here in Los Angeles in Hollywood. I am going to be a uh, part of a fireside chat with my main man over from Stage 32, RB, and it's going to be a wonderful evening. The uh, The conference is called How to Brand, Market, and Build an Audience Using Social Media and Marketing Hustle, and it's going to be pretty, uh, pretty badass, and we're going to have drinks afterwards, so there's alcohol and information, pretty crazy. If you guys want tickets, it's going to be August uh, 16th at 7 p.m., and it's going to be over at the Ignite Spaces uh, on Hollywood Boulevard. But to get all the information on tickets, head over to IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash Holly Shorts Film. Today's show is sponsored by Masterclass and specifically Werner Herzog's Masterclass. I am super, super, super excited about this course uh, that's going to be coming out real soon. But if you enroll now early, you'll get early access to his course. If you guys don't know who Werner Herzog is, he's an Academy Award winning director. If you've heard his voice, you'll know who he is. He directed Grizzly Man, among other great documentaries and feature films. He's got a total of 70 feature films plus over 50 awards. It's remarkable. So he decided to team up with masterclass.com to create an amazing online resource for filmmakers as he teaches you, as he says, the essentials of filmmaking that you can learn within two weeks and you definitely don't have to go to film school. This is over five hours of video. You get a workbook that you could download as well as access to Werner as well. So the course is coming out very, very soon, but if you sign up now, you'll get early access. So all you have to do is head over to IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash masterclass to download this amazing course, which I've already signed up for because I want to I want to take it. So today's episode, guys, is a little bit touchy, uh, a little bit controversial in, in the subject matter. I was uh, asked to be interviewed by a one of the tribe members for a school project out here. Uh, big shout out to Corey. Hope the uh, the interview was good for you, sir. Uh, and he asked me a question about diversity, about diversity in the film industry, and what it means, and 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 just my thoughts on diversity in the film industry in general. And I think it's something that needs to be talked about a bit because it's something that's not talked about at all, generally speaking. Uh, and a positive light's always about, well, you know, there's not enough diversity. There's not enough women directing in the film industry. There's not enough African American directors. There's not enough Latino directors. There's not enough Asian directors. There's not a lot of anything. And it goes on and on and on and on uh, with every ethnicity and gender. But, you know, this is my feeling on it, guys. Uh, should Hollywood, as an institution, as a industry, uh, have more diversity? Uh, throughout the business. Absolutely. There is no question about it. We should have more women. We should have more Latinos. We should have more African Americans. We should have more of what the United States uh, or America or generally the world, you know, there's a big pool and it's not all by one point of view. It should be everybody. Film and entertainment should be from multiple point of views. It's just more interesting that way. But that's a very easy thing to say. Of course, it's the thing you're going to say. Is of course, the thing that I should say. And it is what I believe, 110%. Now, I know I've mentioned it before on the, ca- on the um, podcast, but I am a Latino. I am of Cuban descent. I was born in America, uh, and uh, I was in, raised in New York and Miami. I'm going to tell you something, guys. No one in this business has ever given me shit. All right? Being Latino, not being Latino... It doesn't really matter. Uh, it's about talent. Now, I come from more of an entrepreneurial background, as you guys who've listened to this episode, uh, listened to this podcast know, and I'm very much in the same mindset as a Tyler Perry, a man who, whether you love his movies or not, whether you like his movies or not, irrelevant. What the man has been able to do is unheard of. He took 
his culture, his stories that he wanted to sell and 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 share with his culture and and his demographic, which are African Americans, a segment of the population that was not being catered to as far as storytelling, as far as movies, as far as plays, as far as television, in his opinion, was not being catered to. So he went out and built an empire. And no one could tell Tyler that he couldn't do it because of the color of his skin. It didn't matter to him. He just went out and did it. And when everyone told him he was crazy, he still went out and did it. And now he made so much noise, so much noise that he made doing what he was doing that Hollywood finally took notice and said, hey, we can make money with this. And this is one thing I want you to be very clear about. And this is something my old boss told me many years ago when I was working at a video store. Dave, if you're listening, Dave, thank you for this advice. I asked him once because, you know, I had a, a, a situation that happened to me at the video store where somebody came in and was very upset that I was telling them they couldn't return a movie or do something. Um, and they were upset because I was Latino. And they called him up and said, how dare you, this Latino, tell me what to do and all this kind of stuff. So uh, I asked him about it because I was young. I was still in my teens. And I said, is this something I'm going to have to deal with? And, and and what should I do You know, in the business and Hollywood and all this kind of stuff? Because he knew what I wanted to do. And he said, Alex, the only color that matters in this business is green. That's it. Green is the color that matters in the film industry. The industry, the business, does not care what color, ethnicity, gender you are. If you can provide green, meaning money, they'll welcome you in with open arms. Okay? Now, getting in, knocking on the door, all that kind of stuff is a whole other podcast, a whole other book, courses, a million things you can about how to break in. Tyler didn't break in. Tyler just said, I'm going to go off and do my own thing, and I'm going to make so much damn noise that someone's going to pay attention to me. And that was the way he broke in, by doing his own thing outside of the business and did it so well and so successfully that they finally called him and said, hey, we'd like to get into the Tyler Perry business. And that's exactly what happened. But at the end of the day, it's not about your ethnicity. Sure, you're not getting some opportunities that others are getting. But stop bitching about it and make your own opportunities. That's what I do. That's what I did. I'm creating my own opportunities. You know, with my movie, This Is Meg, I've got a Latina, which is Jill Michelle Milian, and I just made it. I just went out and did it. I'm not waiting around for other people to give me permission. So you shouldn't use your ethnicity or your gender as an excuse to not make something, guys. You know, and I, 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 don't, I don't know how this is going to be received by people, But you know what? I'm just doing it from the bottom of my heart. I don't want anybody out there listening to this podcast to make excuses. And like, oh, I'm not making it because um, I'm Latino or I'm black or I'm a woman. No. Go out and do it yourself. The technology is cheaper than it's ever been in the history of filmmaking. They get the highest quality possible. There are distribution outlets where you can go out and make your sell your own movie and make your own, make your own money. You can create a YouTube channel and start building an audience right now with nobody's permission and you can make that into a multi-million dollar business. And it's been done not once, but many, many, many times throughout the last decade since YouTube's been around. There's no excuses, guys. I'm not saying it's not hard, guys. It's hard. It's extremely hard to be fighting up against being, you know, uh, your gender, being a female, being a black of the color of your skin, being Latino, being Asian. It, it, it's very difficult. Don't get me wrong, but that's not an excuse, guys. You can do whatever you want to in this world. You've just got to go out and do it and you got to put in the hard work. And I guarantee you, you put in that work and you, you create good, good product, good art that people are, are, are resonating with and are willing to pay money for. I guarantee you there, the door, there's going to be a knock at that door. It's going to happen. Do you think that stopped Robert Rodriguez? Do you think that stopped Spike Lee? Do you think it stopped Tyler Perry? Do you think it stopped Guillermo del Toro? Do you think it stopped Alejandro Irutu? from winning two Best Director Oscars in a row? 
We'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. And now back to the show. He is a Latino director from Mexico. You know, you can't use it as an excuse, guys. So I hope what you get out of this podcast is to go out and just do it. Do you. Tell the stories you want to tell. If you don't see the stories that are important to you on the screen, then just go make those stories. And they might not be at the multiplex for 500 or 5,000 theaters. And that's okay. Maybe they're just for 10 theaters. You know, Tyler Perry would would drive around doing his plays uh, in the South, just trying to get an audience for his stuff. Sometimes it'd be five people in the audience. But now he's in those multiplexes, and now he's made millions upon millions of dollars and has given opportunities upon opportunities to many, many people that might have not gotten those opportunities if it wasn't for a Tyler Perry. So guys, you got you have a responsibility, and I've said this before, you have a responsibility of, to, as an artist, as a filmmaker, to get your voice out into the world. And don't let something like your color of your skin or your gender stop you, okay? It hasn't stopped me, and I'm not saying it hasn't been, it's been an easy ride for me. I've been in the trenches, as they say, and you guys know all this if you listen to the podcast, and I have not let it stop me. I have not let me being a Latino stop me. I have not let it, me being outside of the system stop me. You cannot allow anything to stop you. All right, guys? So I really hope you find hope in this podcast and hope in the words that I'm saying because I want you guys to succeed no matter what, no matter where you come from, who you are, or anything. Just do you guys and be truthful to who you are as an artist And you know what? You will find success. It might not be financial success. It might be. Look at Tyler Perry. He he wanted to tell funny stories about his community, about how he was raised, how he grew up, you know, and and that's why he's successful. He didn't try to do something that wasn't authentic to him and to his story and to his journey. This is what you have to find for yourself, guys. And if that is telling stories that are in, uh, in your community, based on the way you were raised and your uh, your culture, great. Or you could just tell general-like stories. I mean, Robert Rodriguez, and I'll bring him up again, Robert has told, you know, he's never actually told a Latino movie. If you've ever, if you if guys study Robert Rodriguez, if you notice, Robert never has made a Latino movie, ever. He has made movies like Spy Kids, who happen to have Latinos in it, as main characters, as story, as, as the family story structure, but he doesn't spotlight it. And I think that's one of the biggest mistakes you could do. Just tell a good story. And if it doesn't matter what kind of color the person is on screen or, or her background is or who's, what kind of color or, or gender it is behind the scenes. You know, Robert, th- that's how he was successful. He's made something like Sin City, which is not a Latino movie by any stretch of the imagination. He just wanted to tell a good story. And that's what he did. So don't get caught up in this, guys. Just do you. Just do you, man. I really hope you guys are listening to my voice, man. I really do. I don't want you to use this as an excuse. So just go out and do it, guys, and stop messing around. All right? I hope you enjoyed that podcast, guys. I I hope it it inspires a few of you to go out and do it and don't let anything. You you can't have any excuses, man. You just can't. You just got to go out and do it. All right? Uh, please head over to IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash 091 to uh, read the show notes about everything we talked about, links and things like that, um, and directors. I'm going to put a couple links up to the directors I talked about so you can kind of see some of their work. And guys, don't forget, we have the Indie Film Syndicate, a, a growing community of uh, filmmakers who are joining this vibrant community and getting access to a ton of filmmaking knowledge um obviously you'll have access to all our podcasts instantly but you'll also have over 40 hours of online courses tutorials and of course you'll find you'll see me uh making this is meg the micro budget film masterclass as i go through it all the things i learned on making this is meg are going to be being put up there in a very organized manner so it will help you guys uh build up your camera rig uh, how to record proper audio 
how to deal with cast, how you do all that, everything, everything from LLC, how to create an LLC all the way to how we distribute it. So as we're going through this over the next year, um, you'll be hearing about it and getting updates monthly. So definitely check that out, indiefilmsyndicate.com. Also, I wanted to give you an update on This Is Meg. Uh, we are, as of the rec- after this recording, we have a couple, about two days left of shooting, a uh, day, day and a half, something like that, of shooting. We just did our big, huge uh, day, which was like a 14-hour day uh, for me and Jill and the team. Uh, and it, it was amazing. We're so, so happy. We had Deborah Wilson. We had Carlos Alzaraki there. Uh, Rook Walker, and it was so much fun. I can't express to you how much fun uh, we're pissing ourselves how funny it is. So uh, this movie is going to, at minimum, make you laugh and uh, and hopefully make you think and make you feel something as well. So uh, we will have more updates on This Is Meg coming up. If you want to join the This Meg This Is Meg community, head over to This Is Meg doc, This Me, This Is Meg dot com which will take you over to our seed and spark and you could just follow us there and we're going to be doing updates there uh, as well until we uh, get the full This Is Meg uh, website up and running. But there you can follow us. So thank you so much for all your help and all your contributions to get This Is Meg out into the world. And if you can, please head over to filmmakingpodcast.com and leave me a good review, hopefully, on iTunes. It helps us amount immensely uh, on rankings and getting the word out on Indie Film Hustle so please, and again, share everything you hear, all our podcasts, all our posts, as much as you can to get the word out on what uh, what I'm trying to do here at Indie Film Hustle and help as many filmmakers and artists out there as I can. So keep that hustle going. Keep that dream alive. And I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to the Indie Film Hustle podcast at IndieFilmHustle.com. That's I-N-D-I-E-F-I-L-M-H-U-S-T-L-E.com.